CNBC has a financial wellness and education initiative. It's called Invest in You, Ready, Set, Grow, as part of our partnership with Acorns, the micro-investing app. And Senator Mark Warner joins us now to discuss his new CNBC op-ed talking about preparing Americans for the future of work. Uh, Senator Warner reintroduced a bill on the subject in February. Senator Warner, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate Senator, what you guys are doing. Let me also just say quickly, I don't give a shout out often to a network, but I appreciate the fact that you're willing to focus on this on this very important issue. Because candidly, most folks where I work here don't understand these fundamental economic changes. So uh, fire away on the negative questions, but I had to give you a little, a little <laughs> shout out there. No, Senator, no, we'll start with a positive question. And thank you for the, for the shout out uh, regardless. But before we get to... Uh, the content of your op-ed mm -hmm. op on how you want to fix the problem, let's just uh, name what the problem is. Ultimately, it, it's the, the growing inequality in the U.S. that you're concerned about. Is that right? It is both growing inequality. It's the fact that the very nature of work has changed. 20th century, we had people that would normally go to work for one firm, stay there their whole career. That's not happening. We've seen a shift in the incentives. 20th century, we had lots of labor and shortage of capital. So everything we did in our tax code and accounting system supported aggregation of capital. 21st century, we got plenty of capital sloshing around. We don't have enough qualified labor. So how do we keep a free enterprise, free market system, but slightly shift the incentives to make sure that everybody gets that fair shot? One of the things you talk about in the op-ed is a portable benefit system. What do you mean by that? What I mean is that virtually every young person, and for that matter, uh, folks even approaching my age are going to have a variety of different jobs during their career or they may have two or three separate income streams at the same time. I think regardless of what type of work you do, for every dollar you make, some portion of that dollar ought to attach to you in a portable benefit system and that benefit travels with you from job to job. Whether government manages that benefit, whether worker organizations manage that benefit, whether fintech management manages that benefit. That we should experiment on, but we've got to make sure there's some level of economic security that's not simply a government program that travels with you throughout your career. Wanted to ask you about the ongoing tech discussion of regulation in Washington and the fact that you know, since we spoke to you last, we now know that the federal government, the DOJ, the FTC, all looking into these tech companies about whether they're monopolies. What do you think that the, the Facebooks and alphabets of the world should be expecting at this point in terms of regulation or potential breakup? Well, clearly these companies are enormous and they have enormous power. Uh, I'm a little concerned on the breakup argument at this moment in time because I'm concerned as global companies, I don't want Facebook, Google replaced with Alibaba, Badu, and Tencent in terms of Chinese companies that offer similar services without any constraints. But I do think we, we have to have these companies realize they have a level of responsibility that candidly they've not taken on yet. So where I would look from a regulatory standpoint, and we have to do this in a way that doesn't so regulate that it cuts out innovation, but there's four, very briefly, there's four buckets. Privacy, where the Europeans have already moved forward, California's moved forward. I think we're going to need some federal legislation on that. Second is around identity validation, particularly when we think about the level of hate speech and we think about the Facebooks and the Twitters, you know, and to a degree YouTubes. You know, how do we think about identity validation or at least the question of shouldn't we have a right to know whether we're being communicated with by a human being versus a bot? Third is I think we're going to have questions about content. When 65% of Americans get their news from Facebook and Google, should they not operate on some of the same rules that CNBC operates on in terms of content? And then finally, and this is one where I think there's maybe the most agreement, we ought to have a lot more transparency. If we knew how much value, uh, data was being collected on each of us, if we knew what the value of that data was, if our data was portable and then interoperable, similar, I was an old telecom guy, similar to the way we mandated number portability and, and telephony, I think we might actually invite more competitors into a market that right now is pretty opaque and pretty closed. So those would be some of the broad outlines of the rules of some regulatory guidelines I think we ought to put in place. And the good news is on virtually every one of these issues, and I'll have a series of bills, um, there's bipartisan agreement. So will we get something done? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we, I work in a place where we're not very high on functionality at this point, but there is a lot of bipartisan agreement. And the alternative may be 
as you mentioned, Justice Department or FTC action. So my hope is the tech companies will come to the, come to the table and negotiate. But, but bipartisan agreement, uh, Senator, but uh, much urgency behind it? Do you foresee this, uh, this coming to play before the next election? Listen, if we don't get our act together before the next election, shame on us. You know, we saw what the Russians did in terms of fake identities in 2016. We saw a couple weeks ago what happens when you simply slow down a video that was the case of Speaker Pelosi. Next iteration of that will be so-called deep fake videos where you won't be able to distinguish who's who. You know, we need to make sure that we put in place some guardrails around social media to protect our election in 2020. We need some basic election security laws so there is a paper ballot trail no matter where you vote. And frankly, I'm not trying to relitigate 2016, but if there are more than 100 plus contacts between a foreign government and a presidential campaign, the way there was between the Russians and the Trump Organization in 2016, on a going forward basis, there ought to be an obligation to report contacts from foreign governments during a presidential campaign to the FBI and law enforcement. So today there was a Wall Street Journal article that uh, was actually hit Facebook stock showing that Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO, apparently in uncovered emails, knew about these problematic privacy practices at the company in response to the FTC probe weren't fully compliant. I mean, do you think that the individual CEOs, the leaders like a Zuckerberg, you guys should be going after them? Well, first of all, let's see if this Wall Street Journal story is true. But there is clearly part of the challenge with a lot of the tech companies is the founders when they, and they, they were great innovators, but they oftentimes created a separate class of stock in terms of founder stock that means that they in many ways get to enjoy the benefits of being a public company without some of the oversight and restrictions. So uh, I think this is a, an issue that is candidly bigger than just Facebook, uh, but again begs the question of we need to put some, in a sense, rules of the road in place and not with a heavy hand. I think there are ways we can even look at industry-based standards and industry-based regulatory bodies as the first step. Uh, but the wild, wild west days of big tech, I think, are over, both from consumer standpoint and from both political parties. And very quickly, Senator Warner, since this happened today, Don Jr. appearing before your, you're the vice chairman of the uh, Select Committee on Intelligence. What can you tell us about his testimony? I'm not going to comment about any of our witnesses. I am proud of the fact that our committee is the last bipartisan effort looking into what Russia did in 2016. We'll finish our work shortly. Uh, but what I think is as important, if not more important, we got 2020 right around the corner. And whether it's Russians or others, they've seen a playbook now. It's cheap to interfere in our democracy. And we need to step up and make sure there is a proactive requirement to report foreign intervention to law enforcement, regardless of what campaign they intervene with. We put election security in place and we put some rules in the road around social media so we don't see the kind of manipulation that took place not only in our country, but we've seen in other nations around the world happen on social media. Senator Mark Warner, thank you very much. Thank for you. For your time. And for more uh, from Invest in You, our program, visit CNBC.com slash invest in you. We should note that NBC Universal and Comcast Ventures are investors in Acorns.